Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. The first John chapter one. That which was from the beginning, Jesus Christ, that which, which Jesus, we have heard, which we have seen, what is how he's calling which? Which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the father and was manifested unto us so people who don't believe jesus he's just a teacher he's just a prophet he was a good person we can call 12 of his devout followers through the three and a half years of his ministry and we can bring them in the courtroom and they can testify that what is so is so and any court would have to say that's so it's true and even so more that we read by uh, Peter the previous book the previous chapter we studied last night it is recorded it is written down in pencil and pen and ink and it's here and even when you get the Prophet Muhammad most of that was just written later on that is not an eyewitness account where you have 12 men and here we have John the beloved Apostle the beloved disciple he's recording to us we touched him we saw him we heard him and we are recording what our life was with Jesus Christ and it will hold up in any court it will hold up at the great white throne judgment which is more an important court this is the one that that laid his head by the heart of God Jesus Christ we got infallible proof of Jesus Christ history records about Jesus Christ his 12 men listen these 12 men one of them was Satan and even he proclaimed before the Roman government and before the, the priests that were against him that hey this man was innocent the scriptures back up and verify who Jesus Christ is you'd be a fool not to adhere to the Bible and call it a liar that which Jesus which we have seen and heard declare we unto you so everything we seen everything that we heard and John concludes his gospel the gospel of John the last chapter last few verses that listen we can't even write everything that Jesus done and what everything he said because the world could not contain all the books you would need a track of trailer to bring your Bible to, to church you couldn't possibly finish your Bible throughout the year and yet it is recorded that these things Peter tells us about the mountain transfiguration that hey we were there we were eyewitnesses so here's two men who followed Jesus for three and a half years. Peter was the first one called by Jesus. Then Andrew. They were together. 
John and James were next called. So here is the the the, the, the disciples. That Satan don't want this thing to get out. That's all going around us today. These are men that can be called before God the Father and say, "This is true." That ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So a union together by the work, by the life, by the ministry, by everything that Jesus Christ has done. Eyewitnesses. In these things, right, we, we, Peter, Paul, Mark, Luke, Matthew, we unto you that your joy may be full. Okay. So one of the things we're going to find that John, 1 John is written, you can have joy and you can have joy to the fullest. So, I'm a Christian. I don't have no joy in my life. Are you reading, studying the Bible? Well, of course, no, I'm not. I read romance novels and mystery novels. I read all that stuff. I read a newspaper. Every day I read it. Do you read the Bible? No. These things write we unto you that your joy may be full. You're not going to have no joy as a Christian if you don't read what's written. According to John, your joy is in reading the Bible. This then is the message which we have heard of him, Jesus, and declare unto you. So let's look at this for a minute. Like, let's say there's an auto accident in an intersection, and there are people that are walking, there are people who, who are driving their cars, or people looking out the window. You know, they're coming out, whatever. There's all kinds of people at, involved in that motor vehicle accident. And the police show up. And, you know, they clean it all up and all that. When the cop comes time now, he's going to say, he gets out of his notebook. And he says, who saw this accident? And, you know, they start stepping up. He goes, one at a time, tell me what you saw. And then they start telling the police officer what they saw of that accident. That can be used for a court of law or the insurance companies. And we have the man Christ Jesus, 33 and a half years, three and a half years of ministry on this planet. And we have 12 men to record to us. All right, this is what happened. And this is still going 2,000 years of what Christ has done for us. And the thing is, if the Gospels, if Peter, if John had never wrote down what Jesus did. If no one picked up a pen and paper, what would we know about Jesus? You're not going to find him in the library. You're not going to find him among worldly books. If it is, well, there was this man named Jesus. He lived for a certain period of time. Boom, that's it. You're not going to find the information about God, Jesus Christ, unless you go in these pages. And by the Holy Spirit, we have the life of Jesus Christ. And they are testifying. They are telling us who Jesus is. So when you read the Gospels, well, you know, the Gospels, they all don't match. Well, neither does that cop get the same story from all the witnesses of that accident. One guy may be standing in a particular spot that the other guy in the street saw clearer. Maybe somebody saw the accident after the fact. And that doesn't discourage about, you know, it, it's wrong and throw it out in the garbage can. Because you got people today who are involved in textbooks telling you about evolution and nobody was there. And those books change every two years. And the Bible, the King James Bible, has not changed since 1611. And from the Geneva Bible, it has not changed. It just put it into an English language. How come evolution teaching the textbooks got to change every two years, and yet the Bible does not change? And they say, "Oh, we can't because it doesn't." It does. 
we get the full picture of Jesus Christ. And yet John tells us we don't get the complete picture because it's unable to record. But the Holy Spirit has given us what we need to know. And declare unto you that God is light. John chapter 3. And in him is no darkness at all. So that's kind of funny. I don't mean ha ha funny. Because we know God's in heaven, correct? But when you look up at the stars at night, and, and there's no sun and just the moon, or maybe no moon night, and you see the stars, and if you look north and you say, well, that's the direction of God, I don't see anything. And NASA sends all its stuff out there, it can, and, and Hubble and all that, and they come back with some wonderful pictures. And yet they don't come back with God the Father. There is some kind of veil that man cannot see past. Because if you were to look over that veil into the third heaven, there is no darkness. When we get to New Jerusalem, and the Bible says New Jerusalem, you won't need the light of the sun or the moon or anything like that. And I've told you, you can get yourself a box. You can put yourself in that box, you can caulk that box, you can seal that box, and doing that, you will still have light in that box. There'll be no shadows in New Jerusalem, there'll be no darkness, because it'll be forever God, forever sinlessness, no iniquities, and that is God. When God came to this earth, it was darkness because there was no God. On this earth in Genesis 1 God vacated it God pronounced judgment upon it there is no light in hell because God is not in hell you know people say well God is in the trees well God's in the stone he's not in hell and without the presence of God there is no light when Jesus showed himself to, to Saul who later became Paul his light was above the noonday light of the sun. There's no we're we're coming we're going to a place where there's no more darkness. People have fears of the dark. Not in heaven. If we say, if a Christian says, if I say that we have fellowship with him, God and Jesus, verse three. They declared unto us. How we can have fellowship with them and how we can have fellowship with God. Now I declare, okay, I have fellowship with God. And walk in darkness, we lie. And do not the truth. So you can't have a profession and having a filthy life. You can't live in the world. Because the world has nothing to do with God and God has nothing to do with the world. The world hates God. And God looks at the world as condemnation. John chapter 3. And you turn around you are a worldly Christian. According to John, you are lying when you have fellowship with God. Well, I go to church Sunday morning. I go to church Sunday night and midweek service. And the rest of the time you are, in, you are whining and dining and whoring with the world and Satan. That's all a lie. That's all a sin. And if you are a Christian, it'll burn up. There'll be no rewards. And we're going to see that later in Lord willing, First John. But, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses, all, cleanses from all sin. So there we go. There's the blood. The blood washes away our sin. I've sinned. We're coming up two verses. We're coming up with a very important passage. The blood cleanses me. I step out of light when I sin. Two more verses. We're going to see that what happens when I step out of light. I have no more fellowship with God. But I can get it back. I got the blood of Jesus Christ. 
So is there any sin that, that you know, God can't forgive me for, for being a Christian? No. It's what you do with that sin. Do you continue in it, enjoy it, or do you put it under the blood? If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Now, there are people out there who do say, I do not sin. And then when you name a sin that they do, then they'll they'll hyperdrive themselves out of it and talk themselves out of it. And, you know, they'll say it's spiritual and physical and all that other kind of nonsense. Listen, I'm still a sinner. I am saved by grace. There's two ways I will be completely sinless in my life. Death and the rapture. Death comes first, I'm not ever going to sin again. Rapture, at that point I'm called in the clouds and I'm judged, I'll never sin again. Right now, I'm a sinner, a saved sinner. And there's no hiding it. Because if I hide it, because look what it says, if, that's conditional. If. God is not going to force you. It's up to you. It's a free will. If. Mark your ifs in the Bible because they stand out. The free will of God that, that defies Calvinism. And that God's going to force us to do things. If we confess our sins. Well, the person in verse 8 ain't going to confess his sins because he doesn't proclaim to be a sinner. And he's lying because he's walking in darkness. And if he's saved, we'll take this written to the Christians. If he's saved, man, the judgment seat of Christ, he's going to be very sorry. Because those sins that he don't do and is lying, all right, there's a lie there itself every time you do sin. So now you doubled sin. I don't sin. Well, you just lied. And then add to it whatever sin you're involved with. And you're not walking with God. But if we confess our sins, plural. Well, he just said, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. So if we confess our sins, John is very neat on this one. If you, go ahead, say you're not a sinner. But if we confess our sins, put an S on it. <laughs> It's not just a sin, it's sins. Now, as far as voiding sin, we can ignore it. I don't do it. We can justify it, which is this verse right here. By confessing our sins to God. We're going to see that in a minute. Or we can just hide them. Here's 50 bucks to the church. Here's three church tenants. Uh, here is, you know, doing something to try to hide your sin. You can ignore your sin, you can justify your sin, or you can hide your sin. One is approved of God because if we confess our sins, He, God, the pronoun of this whole, this whole chapter, He is God, is faithful and just. To forgive us our sins. Now, let's look at this verse for a minute again. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Now, I come from a Roman Catholic background. Okay? You go into the confessional booth. You, you meet with a person. You, you tell him your sins. And he tells you how many prayers and, and what to do about your sins. If we confess our sins, he, if this is the priest, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Is that man faithful? Is that man on the other side of the wall just? If he's not, he can't forgive your sins and he can't cleanse your sins. No matter what lies he tells you. Now let me tell you something about that man. Before you say, oh yes, he's faithful and just. 
The man behind that wall or curtain, whatever your church has, he's a sinner himself for all are born of sin. He has in him Adam's nature. And he's probably not saved. He's probably rejected Jesus Christ on the gospel of the Bible and said, so he's not faithful and just. And you can't go to another born-again Bible-believing Christian because verse 9 is here. And a Bible-believing Christian cannot say we're not sinners because he deceives himself. In order to get your sins washed by God, verse 9, you've got to have someone faithful. And here's the catch. You've got to have someone just. Now, as far as the world of humanity from Adam to day, there's only been one man faithful and just. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the only one that we can take your sins and forgive and to forget according to Hebrews. He's the priest. He's the great high priest that God says, you're the one that can do the sin job of mankind and once for all. So if we confess our sins, that's conditional. Or you can deny your sins. You're in trouble. But if you confess your sins, you notice how he says we. This is John, the beloved disciple. John, the writer of the book of Revelation. If we confess our sins. But even John saying, I'm not forced to. If we confess our sins. He is faithful. God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And you see Proverbs 28, 13. Now, this is where Satan comes in. This is where Satan will toy with your mind. At any point, when you're first saved or somewhere in your saved, well, you go to God and say, God, this sin. And you, listen, you're truly sorry. You went to God. You confessed it. And it's cleansed. And Satan will come into your life sometime after that and say, well, what about that sin there? And then we start worrying. And we need not because God is faithful. God is just, it says, cleanse. Forgive. So when you truly put your sins to God and confess, He has forgiven and He has cleansed our unrighteousness. So it's gone. It's not ever going to show up again. Now, the two phases here is if you go to God and say, oh, I've sinned this sin, God. Oh, okay, now you forgive it. And you, and you keep going doing it. That don't work. Religion. Well, you just candles or whatever. Whatever your religion said. And then they think their sin condition is gone and taken care of. That's going to be like the man standing at the great white throne judgment, standing before God and saying, well, I just said this prayer. Why are you saying me like a fire for saying a prayer? Didn't I say a prayer, Jesus? Depart from me, you work in iniquity. I never knew you. That prayer won't work. But Jesus, didn't I have somebody, whatever religion says about your sin, didn't I do that in the name of religion? Jesus says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But didn't I? That's not the case. God has set a standard. The standard we already saw here. Let's see what the standard is. Chapter 1, verse 1. The word of life. Chapter 1, verse 7. The blood of Jesus Christ. Notice the word and the blood. How many times have we studied that from the book of Acts, chapter 1, to now 1 John, chapter 1. You've got to have the Word, <clears throat> and you've got to have Jesus. That's why I stressed it. That's why I made it known. That's why I try to, always the Word, always the faith, always the blood of Jesus Christ. It runs through the New Testament. You cannot be saved without the word. You cannot be saved without the blood. Anything else, anything, you're not saved. That's why I even stress to the point is that if you've got a modern Bible, it messes with the word. 
Some people won't go that far. I know a well-known preacher, well, not well-known, but many, but he would say, you know, even if you did use a modern Bible, I won't go that far. Now, maybe I'm wrong. But the word, the word, the blood. And if you come to God and say, Father, I've sinned against you. And plead the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse you. Then, that one is faithful and just, is going to forgive you and cleanse you from your unrighteousness by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Don't walk in 1 John 1, 9 with a man's name that's a sinner himself. That's not going to work. I don't know how many years I was fooled by that. That priest such and such, father such and such. And I, and I was resolved of all, I know I wouldn't have been. No, I wouldn't have been to uh, April 25th, I mean 21st, 1987, when I received Christ as my Savior, 25th. I was fooled. Because no man is faithful and no man is just. Listen, all us Christians that will stand the judgment seat of Christ, we all will have some kind of ashes. No one's going to walk away from that judgment seat of Christ without an ash, without a wood, hay, or stubble. So, being that way, we're not faithful and we're not just. If we say that we have not sinned, again, we make him a liar. Now, think about this one. How can you make God a liar if you say you've not sinned? Verse 9 says, if we confess our sins. What was the object of God for our sins? Jesus Christ left that throne, was born to die on Calvary's hill on, on the cross for our sin. And if you tell God, oh, I'm no sinner, then you're saying that Jesus' life and ministry and death and burial and resurrection according to the scriptures God you're a liar I didn't need that and that's one of that's one of the things why I will say in a public ministry if you think you are better than Jesus Christ whatever you think will get you to heaven or whatever you think then you do think you're better than Jesus Christ or you would receive Christ now as your Savior, realizing that everything else is false, everything else is religion, and only Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And you come to God and say, hey, I ain't no sinner. And then you make the ministry of Jesus Christ a lie. I would not want to be charged with that. Can you imagine walking up to the one that suffered and bled and died for your sin, and I didn't need to do that. I'm not a sinner. You just called Jesus a liar. And his W-O-R-D. There it is again. Is not in us. You need the word and you need the blood. And as a Christian, including John, John was one of the great Christians. When Jesus had something wonderful to be happened, Peter, James, and John. The great book that many people love and honor, the book of Revelation, written by John. And John says, hey, I'm a sinner, and I'm not forced to, but if I sin, I should confess my sins. He's right to it, if we confess our sins. And you got to confess it to the right one. This is John. A sinner that's saved. As we are. And don't lie to yourself about not being a sinner. We all are. 